The world is a big place, and the scope of history is even bigger. It's pretty difficult to know every single event in history, but it's also possible to lose sight of how historical happenings from around the globe line up with one another. Looking at a timeline can be pretty mind-blowing when you realize Uranus was discovered before Antarctica and the founding fathers of the United States never knew about dinosaurs. Even when you condense time into a period like the Middle Ages, it isn't always intuitive to match up something that happened in Western Europe with an event or person in Africa, Asia, or the Americas. We got to thinking about what was happening outside of Western Europe during the medieval period and found some fascinating historical comparisons. While it helped us put time and history into perspective, it also made us realize there's a whole lot about the past that deserves more attention. Take a look and let us know which events you agree have been unfairly overlooked. 1. The Vikings were settled in North America before the Christian church split, Scandinavian explorers established at least one colony on the island of Newfoundland around the year 1020 CE. Called Lanse Ux Meadows, the Viking settlement is considered the oldest European settlement in North America. Norse exploration went through the Mediterranean, into the Holy Land, and through parts of modern Russia, Belarus, and Ukraine. Scandinavians not only made their way into Western Europe, but also managed to hit most of the outskirts, too. While Norsemen were exploring, the Christian church was in crisis. Theological disputes, differences in liturgical practices, and issues of jurisdiction had long been an issue between the Pope in Rome and the Patriarch of Constantinople. By 1054 CE, efforts by Pope Leo IX and the Roman Church to force Greek Christians to follow Latin practices were met with resistance by Michael Serralarius, the Patriarch of Constantinople. When the Pope excommunicated Serralarius in July, it essentially broke Christianity into two distinct factions. In the West, Roman Catholicism remained dominant while Greek Orthodox Christianity developed in the East. 2. Gunpowder was used for warfare in China as the Holy Roman Empire was consolidating, Frankish King Charlemagne is often called the first Holy Roman Emperor. While Charlemagne was crowned by Pope Leo III on December 25, 800 CE, it wasn't until 962 CE that the Holy Roman Empire was officially established, although that term wasn't used until the 12th century. The relationship between the papacy and the temporal rulers in Europe continued through the 9th and 10th centuries but shifted east after the demise of the Carolingian Empire. The emergence of the Etonians in what is now Germany saw the rise of Otto I, also known as Otto the Great. In 936 CE, Otto was crowned the Emperor of the Romans by Pope John XII. In a ceremony that actually took place at Charlemagne's former capital, Aachen, as the Holy Roman Empire came to be, gunpowder technology was developing in China. It's difficult to say exactly when gunpowder was invented, but evidence indicates mixtures of saltpeter, sulfur, and carbon were in use during the early 9th century in China. In 904 CE, the Song military reportedly used fire arrows, believed to have been created using early versions of gunpowder. The first gunpowder formula dates to 1044 CE and, in 1076 CE, the Chinese banned selling saltpeter to foreigners for fear of its usefulness spreading to other countries. 3. The Aztecs founded Tenochtitlan as the First War of Scottish Independence came to an end, the official start of the First War of Scottish Independence is 1296 CE, and the struggle continued until the Treaty of Edinburgh-Northampton was reached in 1328 CE. Between 1296 and 1328 CE, the Scots and the English faced off at the Battles of Stirling Bridge, 1297, Falkirk, 1298, and Bannockburn, 1314. Alongside numerous victories by the Scots, the demise of King Edward I in 1307 and the deposition of King Edward II in 1327 set the scene for peace between the two kingdoms in 1328 CE. When Scotland and England signed the Treaty of Edinburgh-Northampton on March 17, 1328 CE, the former was officially recognized as independent. The newly acknowledged Scottish King, Robert I, agreed that Scotland would pay England £100,000 in silver and that his son would enter into a diplomatic marriage with Edward II's sister, Joan. 
but the First War of Scottish Independence nominally indicates a subsequent war would take place and, in 1332 CE, the Second War of Scottish Independence began. It lasted until 1357 CE with the Treaty of Berwick, while the English and Scottish battled, the Aztec civilization was coming into its own. The origins of the Aztecs are unclear, but by the early 14th century, the group had made its way into modern-day Mexico. The term Aztec actually refers to a broad swath of people living in central Mexico. The people who would go on to establish the city of Tenochtitlan are better identified as Mexica. The settlement that grew into the bustling city of Tenochtitlan was founded in 1325 CE in the swampy marshes of Lake Texcoco. According to legend, the Mexica were instructed by the god of war, sun, and human sacrifice, Huitzilopochtli, to build a temple in his honor at the site of a prickly pear cactus. The Mexica found said cactus on the island in the middle of the lake and started building. Tenochtitlan grew for the next two centuries, developed an intricate trade system and economy, and was home to two-stepped pyramids rising side by side on a huge platform. At its height, the population was nearly 150,000 people, however, with the influx of Spanish conquerors, the civilization was decimated by smallpox and military forces alike in 1521 CE. 4. The Cahokia Mounds rose during the Norman conquest of England, the events of 1066 CE and the Norman conquest meant the end of Anglo-Saxon kingship and altered social and political structures in England. For the remaining decades of the 11th century, William the Conqueror consolidated his authority as language, economy, and even diet changed, as England was undergoing this transition, massive mounds were being shaped by settlers along the Mississippi River. Between 120 and 200 mounds were built between 800 CE and 1400 CE at what is believed to have been the largest city north of Mexico, Cahokia. Cahokia once covered as many as 4,000 acres and was home to a population between 10. 000 and 20,000 at its peak, there remains a fair amount of mystery about exactly what life was like at Cahokia. According to Tim Pocketat, an anthropologist from the University of Illinois, Cahokia's grid-like layout is oriented to the sun and the moon alike. There's evidence the people living at Cahokia were from various parts of the Mississippi Valley, and excavations in 1966 revealed a large stockade encircling the central part of Cahokia that was built around 1100 CE. 5. Angkor Wat was built at the height of the crusading movement, Angkor Wat in Cambodia was built by King Suryavarman II during the 12th century. As a Khmer ruler, Suryavarman II conquered neighboring territories in modern-day Vietnam, opened diplomatic relations with China, and patronized art and architecture alike. Angkor Wat reflected Suryavarman II's Hindu beliefs, but the structure was later transitioned into a Buddhist temple. Designed as a Hindu temple, it initially supplemented the existing structure at Angkor. With time, the structure bore artwork and architectural aspects that reflected both Hindu and Buddhist deities and figures. Its sandstone walls contain bar-leaf carvings. While towers, galleries, and passageways span more than 200 acres. About the time Suryavarman II started building Angkor Wat, Crusaders from throughout Europe were likely reveling in the successful First Crusade. In 1099 CE, Christians took possession of Jerusalem, and Crusader states were established at the Holy City, Edessa, Antioch, and Tripoli. In 1144 CE, however, Edessa was conquered by Muslim forces, prompting the Second Crusade in 1147 CE. 6. Mansa Musa appended the Egyptian economy while Italian city-states fought over a bucket, Mansa Musa ruled the Mali Empire from 1312 to 1337 CE, dying just as the first phase of fighting during Hundred Years' War began. When he came to power, Mansa Musa benefited from Mali's salt and gold resources as well as from the ability to expand across Western Africa. Heralded as one of the richest guys anyone has ever seen in human history, Mansa Musa put his wealth on display when he made a pilgrimage, or Hajj, to Mecca in 1324. The devout Muslim traveled overland, some 6,000 miles, with a massive caravan that included thousands of people dressed in finery and 80 camels carrying gold dust alone. 
When they arrived in Cairo, Mansa Musa and his group reportedly gave away thousands of pieces of gold, bought items of all kinds, and introduced so much gold into the economy that it took years for the economy to recover because it depreciated the value of gold. While Mansa Musa was traversing across North Africa and throwing around gold, two Italian city-states were fighting what's been called the Battle of the Wooden Bucket. In 1325 CE, Bologna and Medina came to blows over what had been a long-standing contest between papal and imperial factions in the Italian peninsula. As the story goes, when individuals from Medina stole the bucket the Bolognese used to retrieve water from the municipal well, Bologna demanded it back. Medina refused and a 12-year war broke out. 7. The Reconquista came to an end as Christopher Columbus set out for the Americas, Christopher Columbus first set off to find a route to Asia in August 1492 with the patronage of the Spanish government. Columbus had three ships and fewer than 90 men during his first trip out. When he reached the Caribbean, he encountered indigenous people. He described them in his diary, they willingly traded everything they owned. They were well built, with good bodies and handsome features, they do not bear arms, and do not know them, for I showed them a sword, they took it by the edge and cut themselves out of ignorance. They have no iron, they would make fine servants. With fifty men we could subjugate them all and make them do whatever we want. Columbus spent the 1490s going back and forth between Europe and the New World, while those same Spanish monarchs who supported his trips saw the end of Muslim-occupied Iberia. The Reconquista, as it's known, was the slow retaking of Iberia by Christians after Muslim Umayyads arrived in 711 CE. By 1492, the only remaining Muslim kingdom in Iberia was Granada but, on January 2nd of that year, the king surrendered to King Ferdinand II of Aragon and Queen Isabella of Castile, whose marriage unified Spain. From there, all Muslims were either driven out or converted to Christianity. 8. Justinian I codified law while Saint Benedict wrote his monastic rule, as two pretty important happenings from the 6th century, it's easy to overlook that they more or less occurred at the same time. Justinian, the Byzantine emperor from 527 to 565 CE, tasked himself with collecting and codifying existing laws and legal works from the Roman world. He ordered the creation of the Corpus Juris Civis, a three-part compilation, in 528 CE. By the time the work was completed, the Digesta, the Codex, and the institution's documented legal writings, listed actual laws and legislation, and served as a legal textbook, respectively. The corpus underwent edits and new editions with time, ultimately going on to serve as the model and foundation for numerous legal systems worldwide, as Justinian tasked individuals with documenting rules, Benedict of Nursia was making guidelines of his own. Benedict, born c. 480 CE, spent his youth in Rome before moving a more remote part of Italy. As a pious and miracle-performing Christian, Benedict attracted followers. After vacillating between living as a hermit and living in a monastery for years, Benedict ultimately established twelve religious houses. By the time he passed in 550 CE, Benedict's monasteries were guided by the rule of Saint Benedict, a set of instructions about how to live both a practical and spiritual life. This rule, strict yet reasonable, especially compared to ascetic practices, became the standardized monastic framework under Charlemagne during the 8th century. Its place in medieval religion and society grew from there. 9. Johannes Gutenberg had the printing press, but the Inca-built Machu Picchu, invented by Johannes Gutenberg during the mid-15th century, the printing press revolutionized how information was disseminated in Europe. Movable type printing had long been used in China, but the Gutenberg press allowed for widespread reproduction of written works, especially the Bible. As Europeans were gaining access to pamphlets, books, and a host of printed works, the Inca were building the massive stone complex at Machu Picchu. Machu Picchu is located high in the Andes Mountains, which are deep in the rainforests of South America. Walls, terraces, ramps, and the other remaining parts of the citadel are located across five miles of land believed to have once been either a royal estate or a religious center. 
Machu Picchu was constructed around 1450 CE and remains a marvel to modern observers. Civil engineer Ken Wright explained to Discovery Magazine, they did not have the wheel, they did not have iron or steel, and they did not have written language, the Inca used organized labor, the Mita system, were experts in working with stone, no mortar was used, and, in the words of architect Vince Lee, probably knew more about moving giant rocks than we could imagine in our wildest dreams. 10. The Mongols besieged Baghdad as Henry III lost land in France, while the Treaty of Paris signed by King Louis IX of France and King Henry III of England in 1259 CE was supposed to quell animosity between the two kingdoms, future wars, namely the Hundred Years' War, would indicate it did not. Despite this, the document signaled England's official loss of Normandy, Anjou, Maine, Touraine, and Poitou to the French. The Treaty of Paris did acknowledge Henry III's holdings in Bordeaux, Bayonne, and Gascony, although the English monarch remained under the lordship of the French king. As Henry III of England yielded ground, the Mongols were extending their dominance across Asia. In January 1258 CE, Mongol forces led by Hulagu Khan, the grandson of Genghis Khan, began a siege of Baghdad that lasted nearly two weeks. At the time, Baghdad was the capital of the Abbasid Caliphate and had a legacy of serving as the center of Islamic learning and culture. The surrender of the city on February 10, 1258, signaled an end to Baghdad's prestige as well as the entire Abbasid Caliphate, after entering Baghdad, Hulagu and the Mongols reportedly brought a veritable reign of terror which lasted for 40 days. Persian historian Abdullah Wasif wrote, they, the Mongols, swept through the city like hungry falcons attacking a flight of doves, or like raging wolves attacking sheep, with loose reins and shameless faces. Murdering and spreading terror. Beds and cushions made of gold and encrusted with jewels were cut to pieces with knives and torn to shreds. Those hiding behind the veils of the great harem were dragged. Through the streets and alleys, each of them becoming a plaything. As the population died at the hands of the invaders. 11. Muhammad grew up while the papacy found its footing in Rome, born around 570 CE in Mecca, Muhammad was raised by his mother, Amina, until her passing when he was about five years old. His father had already passed away, so Muhammad entered the care of his grandfather until he ultimately moved in with his uncle. Under the guidance of the latter, he learned about trading, worked in camel caravans, and ventured throughout the region. During the 590s, he came into the service of a wealthy merchant woman, Khadija, who he later married, it wasn't until Muhammad was 40 years old that he had his first revelation. While meditating near Mecca in 610 CE, he was visited by the angel Gabriel, who began giving Muhammad messages from God. For years afterward, Muhammad received more messages, now recorded in the Quran, and slowly began to attract followers. His growing influence proved problematic for political authorities in Mecca, who forced Muhammad and his followers out of the city. They relocated to Medina in 622 CE, considered to be the first year of the Muslim calendar. Muhammad's community in Medina engaged in several battles during the 620s, ultimately attacking Mecca and capturing it in 630 CE. Muhammad continued to preach and grow the Islamic faith until his demise in 632 CE, the formation of Islam coincided with the papacy of Gregory I, also known as Saint Gregory and Gregory the Great. Gregory became Pope in 590 CE as Rome and the Christian Church looked to repair themselves in the Western world. Gregory initiated conversion efforts throughout the continent, notably sending missionaries to England. He also reformed the liturgy, asserted temporal control over Rome, and shaped Christian spirituality with his written works. While Saint Gregory may not have actively worked to grow the power of the Church according to some historians, that's what happened during his tenure. Gregory acted as a servant of God's servants, a self-given moniker that became part of the official title of the Pope. And that wraps up our exploration into the fascinating timeline of the Middle Ages. From the sprawling empires of the East to the vibrant cultures of the West, we've uncovered a tapestry of history that defies convention. Remember, the world is vast, and its history even more so.
If you enjoyed today's journey, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more mind-bending insights into the annals of time. Until next time, keep questioning, keep exploring, and keep embracing the complexity of our shared past.